So we review a lot of compact gaming cases on this channel, but uh, yeah, this isn't one of those. So this is the Gemini X from Cougar and it's a dual system, $899 US case. So it's massive and it's expensive. I've got a feeling I should have left that on actually. Yeah. It's a PC case. It's just one more thing left to do before we get to the review. And so here it is on the review table. The Gemini X from Cougar is by far the biggest case that I've ever reviewed. Today we're going to investigate why anyone would even want a case like this in the first place, take a look at hardware compatibility, thermals, and of course that dual system build. Okay, so before we dive into the specs and compatibility, I want to show you just how big this thing really is. It's 140 liters in total volume, standing at 635 millimeters tall. So before anything else, just make sure that you've got enough room on your desk. For a comparison, here it is next to a mainstream mid-tower case, the NZXT H500, the vertical Fantex Evolve Shift, the NCASE M1, and then the 7.2 liter DAN A4, which looks like an absolute ant in comparison. Obviously, there's a point to the Gemini X being so big though, and that's of course that dual chamber layout, accommodating up to two water-cooled systems. The structure and build quality of the Gemini X is very impressive, but rightfully so if you're paying this much money. There's five millimeter thick tempered glass panels on either side of the case as well as the front. These are lightly tinted and are mounted via thumb screws. The rest of the frame is constructed via three millimeter thick aluminium panels, which have been anodized for that space gray finish, which I always love to see on a PC exterior. The Gemini X looks straight out of a sci-fi movie, if I'm honest. It looks like an alien pod or a weapons crate. I just wish they hadn't branded those front panels so blatantly as this distracts from the otherwise excellent design. Now there's thick rubber feet on each edge, allowing you to rotate the case to lay flat on either side. This means that you could use the case either vertically or horizontally depending on your setup. And in my opinion, the design looks great either way. It's actually quite functional too, seeing as you can safely rotate the entire case on its side to build in it like an open test bench. IO is pretty solid, so no complaints here. It's identical for both systems. You've got two USB 3.0 ports, usual power and reset and headphone and mic jack, and also a single 3.1 Gen 2 type C port. All right, now let's talk about that whole dual system thing. I mean, it is a pretty unique use case, if I'm honest. Now, this case is competing directly with the Corsair 1000D and the Fantex Volf Shift. So all three of these cases can accommodate up to one ATX and one mini ITX system internally in the single case. The Evolve X is the most compact of the three, but this is because both systems will need to run off of a single power supply, the Fantex Revolt X, whereas the Corsair 1000D and Cougar Gemini X both have dedicated power supplies for each system. Basically, any use case where you have one system that's compiling and executing the work, which is scheduled and created by another system at the same setup, could benefit from uh, a dual system case like this or the Evolve X or the Corsair 1000D, uh, as opposed to having the two separate systems in two separate cases. Streamers, for example, who would be using one system for gaming and then uh, the other system for streaming and video encoding, could benefit from a dual system case like this. And I think that would be a pretty practical use case for a dual system enclosure. So in terms of the dual system layout, let's take a look at the primary chamber first. This chamber is completely reserved for your ATX motherboard, GPUs, and up to two 240 mm radiators, one at the top and the other at the bottom. The secondary chamber is where you'll mount the ITX motherboard and the power supplies for both systems, one ATX and one SFX unit. For storage, you've got up to two cages for three and a half and two and a half inch drives, where you can fit up to four drives in both. These cages can also be removed. Here you can populate up to four 120 millimeter fans in each chamber, but I was a little disappointed when it came to radiator support in the second chamber, a 240 mm radiator will not fit either at the top or the bottom. This is because it conflicts with the 
power supply brackets at either end. So instead, you're limited to a 120 mil AIO as I have used in my test system here. Keep in mind, I did have to remove the three and a half inch drive cage to fit this though. Now, I truly believe that by shifting the orientation and position of some of the components in the secondary chamber, the 240 mil AIO support could have been achieved. I know 120 mil AIOs are fine for gaming builds, but this case is really big and 240 support should definitely be there. Airflow design is pretty simple and balanced, intake through one end and exhaust out through the other. Just make sure not to switch the intake and exhaust in the separate chambers as that way you'll be recycling hot air from either system. And so for my build in the Gemini X, I wanted to build something that would reflect what I think would be a realistic setup in this case. So this is an example of the primary chamber being being used for streaming or video encoding via the 16 core Threadripper 2950X and 2080 Ti, and the secondary chamber being used solely for gaming with a 9900K and a GTX 1080. I would have loved to use that thick and more powerful 2080 Ti in the gaming build, seeing as this makes the most sense, but unfortunately we're limited to a two slot card in that secondary chamber. The whole build process was fairly straightforward, but took about three to four times longer than usual, since of course we're building two systems here, and I had spent some time at managing the cables as best as I could. Overall, I think the build looks pretty neat, especially the primary system. I love the fact that you can rotate the build to suit your setup and preference. For example, I really like that inverted ATX look for the primary chamber. Horizontal looks pretty epic too. Just make sure that you've got enough room on your desk or floor because that footprint is absolutely enormous. And to make this build look even more alien-like, I threw in some NZXT Q2 RGB strips and RGB fans. Just note that the case does not come with any case fans or RGB strips. Those will need to be purchased separately. By the way, Cougar do include dust filters in the accessory packet to cover the fans if you're worried about dust. Something else I want to mention here, and it's pretty important, is the cable management. And the biggest issue here is the fact that the power supply for the primary system is actually in the secondary chamber. And so this means that all of your power supply cables will need to be routed through the gap. So just be prepared for a bit of cable mess between the two chambers. I believe Cougar placed the primary power supply in the other chamber to make room for a custom loop. So for custom water cooling, it definitely makes sense. By the way, the CPU cooler height in both chambers is just 140 millimeters. That should be okay for the mini ITX system under gaming loads, but for the primary ATX system, you'll definitely want to go for a 240 mil rad, especially if you're gonna be using that system for uh, video encoding or rendering. Okay, so finally, let's talk about thermal and we're going to specifically be looking at the two systems currently inside the Gemini X, one for encoding and one for gaming, as I believe this represents a real world use case for a dual system. Also because the standardized system that I've been using to test case airflow does not fit inside the Gemini X since the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 CPU cooler is just a bit too tall. So I've gone for a complete positive pressure setup here with all of the case fans and radiator fans pulling air into the case, which is then passively exhausted through the back and the front. In the secondary chamber, at least all intakes are definitely the way to go in my opinion, as an exhaust airflow setup would either be finding the intake fans on the GPU or the power supply. And as we can see here, thermals are actually pretty impressive for an old glass case. The Threadripper 2950X has a lot of headroom for overclocking, and the Aorus Extreme 2080 Ti is actually running cooler than compared to an open test bench, as here it has two 120mm fans pointed directly below it. For the secondary system, temperatures were a little warmer than I'd like, but still well within a safe range. The 9900K is a pretty overkill CPU for a gaming system I might add, and keep in mind we're running it through a blender render which represents a torture workload. GPU temps for the GTX 1080 Strix were a bit warmer than I'd like to, and this is because the fans on the cooler are almost entirely blocked by that SFX power supply. So thermals overall were good, the dual system is running quite well, and the Gemini X does make for a pretty cool, although not very compact, dual system enclosure. My only real complaint with the Gemini X is the lack of the 240mm radiator support in that secondary chamber, which you know, for a case this big, it really should have that in my opinion. When I first saw the case, I really did assume, you know, a 240mm rad would fit on either end uh, of each chamber. Uh, for gaming systems, you know, you do have 140mm clearance for CPU coolers, so uh, Noctua U9S and Noctua D9L, those are more than capable CPU coolers, uh, especially if you're just running CPU in gaming. 
And so overall, the Gemini X does explore that niche use case of two systems in a single enclosure. And I think it does it pretty well while looking pretty unique and awesome although not very compact. I'd love to know what you guys think of the Gemini X though. And if you were gonna build a dual system uh, enclosure, would you go for this or the Corsair 1000D or perhaps the Fentex Evolve uh, X? I personally don't ever see myself using a dual system enclosure uh, down the line because I honestly don't have a use case for it. But nevertheless, this video was a whole lot of fun. So as always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.